Is alcohol-based mouthwash bad? Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to talk about mouthwash and how lots of people are saying alcohol-based mouthwash is bad. Here's the thing, it's not inherently bad for everyone, but some research suggests that there is more cons than pros for alcohol-containing mouthwash. I personally do recommend alcohol-free mouthwash to most of my patients. However, if someone really likes their alcohol-containing mouthwash, I don't always tell them to stop using it right away. There's a few things to consider before you instantly throw all of your alcohol-based mouthwash away. Let's talk. Just because you heard someone online saying something is bad doesn't mean it's bad, right? Alcohol-based mouthwashes have both pros and cons, and whether they are bad depends on individual circumstances and preferences. So the pros of alcohol-containing mouthwash are number one, antimicrobial properties. Alcohol can help kill bacteria and reduce plaque and gingivitis. And two, fresh breath. It can help freshen breath by killing odor-causing bacteria, although some research suggests that alcohol-free mouthwashes do it better, which is why it's so important to always discuss which products to use with your individual dental provider because they know your mouth best and can take into account all of the variables in choosing the best dental products for you. Now, the cons of alcohol-based mouthwash. And keep in mind, there needs to be more studies on most of these. Most are subjective or anecdotal. However, as I've seen in my clinical work and some studies have suggested, number one, mouthwashes containing alcohol have the potential to dry out your mouth. And since dry mouth increases your chance of bad breath and raises your risk of developing cavities, this is the big one everyone's talking about. However, it doesn't seem to cause dry mouth as much. It's more that it may increase dry mouth for those who already have dry mouth. Number two, irritation. It can be irritating to the oral tissues, especially for people with sensitive mouths or existing sores. Number three, burning sensation. Some people find the burning sensation of alcohol mouthwash uncomfortable. However, others love it. They love the burn. You do you. Just don't overuse it. Don't overuse any type of mouthwash, whether it contains alcohol or not. We'll talk about that in just a second. And number four, alcohol containing mouthwashes are not suitable for everyone. So people with certain health conditions, such as those undergoing cancer treatments or those with alcohol dependencies should avoid alcohol-based mouthwashes. Which brings us to alcohol-free mouthwash. These can provide similar benefits without the drawbacks of alcohol. For many people, alcohol-free mouthwashes are a safer and more comfortable option, especially if they experience dryness or irritation with alcohol products. Again, I do recommend alcohol-free mouthwash to almost all of my patients, especially those who already have dry mouth or are cavity prone, mostly because there seems to be more adverse effects with alcohol containing mouthwash. Again, further long-term studies are needed to confirm these findings. So if you really like the burn of alcohol in your mouthwash, it makes your mouth feel clean to you. It's okay to use it. Again, they're not inherently bad, but definitely consider avoiding it if you have dry mouth. But say you're using an alcohol-based mouthwash and you hate it. You're just forcing yourself to get through the burning sensation because you feel like you need to do that. Please know there's no reason to be doing that unless your dentist told you otherwise. If you just underwent some type of gum surgery or something, maybe they recommend you to power through a difficult mouthwash for a short while, not indefinitely, I suppose that's a possibility. But no matter what type of mouthwash you like to use, if you remember anything from this video, just remember that mouthwash does not replace brushing and flossing. The mechanical motion of removing plaque and debris from your teeth with a toothbrush and floss or a water flosser or an interdental brush, whatever you use to clean between your teeth, nothing can replace that mechanical removal of plaque, especially not a liquid being switched around in your mouth. Sure, there is a time and place for mouthwash. If you are cavity prone, then an anti cavity mouthwash can be a helpful addition to your home care routine. If you have sensitivity, then an anti-sensitivity mouthwash might be helpful. If you're struggling with gum health, maybe an antiseptic mouthwash. There's a time and place to add certain mouthwashes in conjunction with your brushing and flossing, but there's never a time or place where mouthwash replaces brushing and flossing. Overall, it's really not that serious. The whole mouthwash is bad stuff. People tend to panic over hearing random things online, but again, as long as you're not overusing it, meaning you're not using it more than it's recommended, the label will say how often you should use it. And as long as you're not undergoing cancer therapy, a small child who might accidentally drink it, maybe even if you're prone to thrush or immunocompromised, if you have a history of alcoholism, alcohol dependency, or you're a recovering alcoholic, unless you're any of those, I wouldn't freak out about getting rid of all your alcohol-based mouthwashes. And of course, again, always talk with your individual dental provider about what's best for your individual mouth. They can offer you tailored advice to your specific dental needs. It's much more important to make sure your brushing and flossing techniques are good, that those are solid before you even think about 
about adding a mouthwash to your home care routine. And speaking of your home care routine, if you're interested in creating the perfect routine to prevent major dental issues and costly dental visits, make sure to click the link in the description or in the pinned comment below to sign up for my free oral care guide and discover all of the essentials for an effective oral hygiene routine. This guide is an action plan for preventing and maintaining a happier and healthier smile, and I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want even more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, and hang out with me on Instagram, at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.